Hi. Hello again. We're in the middle of J.C. Ryle's discussion of the Transfiguration. Mm. And here's his reasoning on the clear evidence that the Transfigur Transfiguration gives that the dead will rise again, which was not unanimous, unanimously agreed upon by even Jews in those days. Mm -hmm. Now we have in the Transfiguration the clearest evidence that the dead will rise again. We find two men appearing on earth in their bodies who had long been separate from the land of the living and in them we have a pledge of the resurrection of all. All that have ever lived upon earth will again be called to life and render up their account. Well obviously that's not what we thought mm. and we're taught as witnesses. Not one will be found missing. There is no such thing as annihilation. All that have ever fallen asleep in Christ will be found in safekeeping patriarchs, prophets, apostles, martyrs, down to the humblest servant of God in our own day. Mm -hmm. Though unseen to us, they all live to God. He is not a God of the dead, but of the living. Luke 20, verse 20. Their spirits live as surely as we live ourselves, and will appear hereafter in glorified bodies as surely as Moses and Elijah in the mount. These are indeed solemn thoughts. There is a resurrection, and men like Felix may well tremble. Remember, Felix is the one through whom, to whom uh, Paul made his defense mm -hmm. in Acts before he went to, to uh, Rome for his trial before Caesar. And he got nervous because he was talking about a judgment day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, that's right. At the okay. point at which Paul talks about judgment and righteousness, Felix says, maybe some other time. <laughs> there is a resurrection, Ryle says, and men like Paul may well rejoice although Felix trembled. In the last place, we have in these verses a remarkable testimony to Christ's infinite superiority over all that are born of woman. This is a point which is brought out strongly by the voice from heaven, which the disciples heard. Peter, bewildered by the heavenly vision and not knowing what to say, proposed to build three tabernacles, one for Christ, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He seemed, in fact, to place the lawgiver and the prophets side by side with his divine master, as if all three were equal. At once, we are told, the proposal was rebuked in a marked manner. A cloud covered Moses and Elijah, and they were no more seen. A voice at the same time came forth from the cloud, repeating the solemn words made use of at our Lord's baptism. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. That voice was meant to teach Peter that there was one there far greater than Moses or Elijah. Moses was a faithful servant of God. Elijah was a bold witness for the truth but Christ was far above either one or the other. He was the Savior to whom law and prophets were continually pointing. He was the true prophet whom all were commanded to hear. Moses and Elijah were great men in their day, but Peter and his companions were to remember that in nature, dignity, and office they were far below Christ. He was the true sun. They were the stars depending daily on his light. He was the root. They were the branches. He was the master. They were the servants. Their goodness was all derived. His was original and his own. Let them honor Moses and the prophets as holy men. But if they would be saved, they must take Christ alone for their master and glory only in him. Hear ye him. Let us see in these words a striking lesson to the whole Church of Christ. There is a constant tendency in human nature to hear man, bishops, priests, deacons, popes, cardinals, councils, Presbyterian preachers, and independent ministers are continually exalted to a place which God never intended them to fill and made practically to usurp the honor of Christ. And Ryle hasn't even seen the cults yet. <laughs> They're coming in that generation. Against this tendency, let us all watch and be on our guard. Let these solemn words of the vision ever ring in our ears. 
Hear ye Christ. The best of men are only men at their very best. Patriarchs, prophets, and apostles, martyrs, fathers, reformers, Puritans, all, all are sinners who need a Savior. Holy, useful, honorable in their place, but sinners after all. They must never be allowed to stand between us and Christ. He alone is the Son in whom the Father is well pleased. He alone is sealed and appointed to give the bread of life. He alone has the key in his hands. God over all, blessed forever. Let us take heed that we hear his voice and follow him. Let us value all religious teaching just in proportion as it leads us to Jesus. The sum and substance of saving religion is to hear Christ. Mm -hmm. I've got to think that if we had heard this advice, mm -hmm. at least in my case, before I chose to become a witness, I could have answered the question, does this teaching, that is the watchtower, does it lead me to Christ? Mm -hmm. Does it even center on Christ? Does it make him the highest? You know, or are they either on equal plane with him? Do I have to be obedient to them? Yeah. Or is it pushing me to be obedient to Christ as Savior? So I heard all the time, don't trust in men and to whom no salvation belongs, but it was never applied to them. No. It was always applied to you. Yeah. Don't trust yourself, your own thinking, but trust us. We'll yeah. put a link into uh, Paul preaching judgment. Now you'll notice here, back in the very first paragraph, when he's talking about all that have ever lived upon earth will again be called to life. This is a teaching mm -hmm. that the watchtower and many ex-witnesses mm -hmm. still reject. Yeah. All will come back to be and judged. The idea that you're annihilated, that you're just gone, makes some who, who leave just think, oh well I'll just have fun on the earth while I'm here. I don't have to worry about anything in the future. And, and if you've got this wrong, and they have, whoa. Mm -hmm. Well, Felix had to worry about it. Paul made sure of that before he left his, yeah. uh, his hearing in uh, Caesarea, yeah. that Felix at least heard about righteousness and the judgment to come, at which point mm -hmm. Felix said no more. Yeah. And, and then Paul goes to Athens, uh, had already gone to Athens at that point, mm -hmm. and he preached that judgment day. He didn't preach the Old Testament. He didn't even preach Christ explicitly, at least at the beginning of the sermon. But by the end, he got to the day of judgment, and then Christ comes in as the one before whom we will judge. all stand yeah. mm -hmm. on that day. So the judgment of, the, the final judgment, the fact that all men will rise for that judgment, was what Paul preached yeah. to the unbelievers in that day. So we've done a video on that, which mm -hmm. we'll link. And the playlist, which is what JW.org is not telling you. Mm-hmm.